Okay, so this is a separate video here where I'm gonna solve example 2.1, which is a multiple liquid manometer. And as I mentioned, I'm doing a separate video here just for the examples for convenience sake, but really we see from the outline here, example 2.1 is really a part of section 2.2. So we have an example to demonstrate how we calculate pressure variation in a static fluid. Okay, so in this example, I'm gonna show how we calculate the pressure difference between two pipes using a multiple liquid manometer that's connected between the two. So we'll see how we can use the different depths of the fluid to figure out the pressure difference between these two pipes. So it says we have two different pipes, pipes A and B, and water flows through them. So if you look at this figure, just to sort of orient ourselves, we're looking at cross sections of these two pipes there listed as A and B. So the water is flowing in a direction that's normal to our page here. Lubricating oils in the upper portion of the inverted U, mercury is in the bottom of the manometer bends. So determine the pressure difference PA minus PB in units of Pascal. Okay, I want to start by reviewing the units. I think that's a really good strategy for making sure we get these problems correct. And so I'm going to say this many times throughout the course, so let this be the first one. You should always, always, always check the units on your problems. It's a great way to double check them. And virtually all the errors I see on exams could have been avoided if the units just would have been double checked. So the units of Pascal, that's a pressure unit, so that's a force over an area. So we know Pascal's are newtons per meter squared. Okay, meters squared is straightforward for us, but let's break out the newton units here just to make sure we're all on the same page. The newton is a force, and we know that a force is going to have units of mass times acceleration. So when we write that out, it's going to be that newtons equals mass, so kilograms times acceleration, which is meters per second squared. Okay, then we begin with the equation we derived from above. So that just tells us that delta P equals rho GH. And in the case of a multiple liquid manometer, we're just going to use a summation of all the different rho GHs added up. Okay, now another common error that I see when marking these questions is people try to start with just writing the expression for PA pi minus PB. And they'll oftentimes get the signs incorrect. So what I suggest is you just work from one point to another point and you write the pressures out as I'm going to do here and then later you simplify the equation to be PA minus PB. So we'll just say in this case we're going to work from point B to point A. Okay, and what do I mean by that? Well, I'll write the example here. So we're going to say then the pressure at point A equals, and now what we're going to do is work from point B all our way along the manometer and get ourselves all the way back to calculate what it is there back at point A. So that equals PB, and that gives us the pressure right at point B there. So then we work downwards, and we remember that moving downwards is an increase in pressure, right? So we add on rho GH here for this little portion of water we just traveled downwards. So and 16 centimeters will be written as 0.16 meters. So then we travel down to our next point, and we see because of the equal depth of the mercury here, that the value here will have the same value as that across from it, so we just need to travel down to here. So we add in the density and the height of that fluid, and we add again because it's greater because it's deeper. Then from that point, we see the oil, again, is going to have that same depth right across it, right here. So we just need to travel upwards to that point. Because we're moving upwards, we now subtract. So we subtract. Then we have the mercury again, and we can go across to the same depth here, which will have the same pressure all the way across, and we go down through the mercury. We're going down, so we add that. And that puts us right here, which has the same pressure all the way across. Then to get back up to point A, we need to go through the water column. So we're going back up a height of 20 centimeters there. We go up, we reduce the pressure, so we subtract. Okay, now at this point, it's just a question of subbing in all these values, and the question is actually solved. 
So if you have a table, you can look up all the density values of the water, the oil, and the mercury there, and then your problem is solved. I'm going to solve this question using specific gravity just to illustrate how that's done. So I'll use the table that's provided at the back of Fox and McDonald. I'll show that quickly here where you get these um, specific gravity values from, and then I'll go ahead and sub that in and solve this question. Okay, so that's what the table looks like. That's where we get the specific gravity values from. Now I'm gonna sub in for each of these density values and just substitute that relationship I wrote out there. So each of these density values is gonna be that fluid's specific gravity times the density of water. And I'll, I'll rearrange the equation as well, which will now be PA minus PB. I just bring that PB over to the left-hand side. Okay, let's sub those in. Okay, sub in for G and the density of water now. Make sure to include our units, right? Just as a back check here to make sure everything's working out. Okay, so we've double checked our units there. When we go through and look at the units, we're left with kilograms per second squared meter. That's the same unit as newtons divided by meters squared. We can simplify for significant figures to be 20,000 pascals there. We normally write this unit in terms of kilopascals, but this question specifically asks for pascals. So we'll write 20,000, box our answer there so that the markers are happy and everybody knows what our answer is. And uh, that's that. We can also take a quick look to see that this is indicating, since it's PA minus PB, that the pressure in A is higher than the pressure in B by about 20,000 pascals. Okay, so that's the end of example 2.1. And in our next video, we continue uh, fluid statics. And so that'll be video number five.